Hello boys and girls, welcome to Benchar, time for classic and for today what I do every need is Tales of Rise, a game developed by Bandai Namco Entertainment and it is using Unreal Engine 4 and my objective today it is to see how this game performs on a GT 740M or a GT 920M and for the settings what I'm using is uh, pretty much 720p and all the settings at the lowest settings possible aside for anti-aliasing which I'm using SMAA and then I decided to try with two different settings so the first one it is the low with uh, TAA and by using this setting I got an average of 24 frames per second and a 1% of 18 so pretty much uh, most of the time the game was below 30 and I don't think that this is truly playable so alternatively, what I have done, it was to use the settings that you saw there on screen. So it's just low settings and TV being set to SMAA. And also I'm using 50% of resolution scaling. Unfortunately, the game only allows you to select between 50 or 100. But at 50, my experience was overall above 30 frames per second. Not overall, it was all the time above 30 frames per second. And that is really good. Considering that the minimum requirements for this game, it is a GTX 760, we are actually able to play the game above 30 frames per second. Yes, the resolution scaling it is pretty low at this resolution, but still, uh, it is manageable to be played. All right. Now, this is not a very good benchmark for a reason. Tales of Arise, it is a GRPG, a big one, where you can spend dozens of hours. Uh, I really mean like 50 hours, all right? Uh, this is what you can expect for the game to, to be lasting and there are different biomes So in the beginning of the game in these early hours you have this kind of desert environment But as far as I'm aware tales uh, also have uh, different biomes with much more grass and water, you know a much more tropical feeling and I'm expecting that on those specific environments uh, the game might be more demanding than simply rendering uh, a desert with a couple of grass here and there and water so what i'm trying to say is that i'm not really sure what performance you you will have in different biomes or more forward into the game what i know so far is during the early hours in this specific biome the performance it is great as you can see i'm having 50 frames per second sometimes 40 and again the lowest that i have seen it was 34 uh, during some cutscenes it might be a little bit more demanding, at some point it might even drop below 30 if it is over viewing a big area, but apart from that the performance that you can expect in this game it is more than playable with these uh, low settings, SMAA and using 50% of resolution scaling. So I think that's all that I want to talk about the performance, let's now talk a little bit about the game. Well, since I didn't spend too much time with the game, I can't really say how good or bad the game is, but there are some things that I will quote from reviewers and some I don't really need to do it because it's very apparent. And let's start with the graphics. Graphics, it is clearly uh, the biggest difference comparing to the predecessors because they ditched their in-house engine and they are now using Unreal Engine 4. And they could still use more or less the visuals of the classic games, but no, they decide to take full advantage of the engine, and I'm not saying that they are pushing boundaries in here, far from it, but they are making a very good use of the engine, very good aesthetic, and it is running great. All right, that's one of the things that you should know about it. Now, the second thing is, well, the combat. The combat feels a little bit more loose, it seems to have more freedom into it, and because of that same reason, uh, it feels more satisfied to play. That is now a new type of attack, which I don't know the name, but for example on Persona 4 it is called an all-out attack, which is where when you and your allies attack an enemy together, there is a, a kind of a special cutscene that appear uh, with you and your allies attacking together and causing massive damage to the opponent. Well, there's that, and for the rest, as far as I did understand with the reviewers, it is more of the same of Tales, which is not, necessary, uh, not necessarily a bad thing, honestly, but it is great. Uh, one of the things where the game didn't evolve, though, it is really in the ways that the map are performed or done. Uh, some people are expecting that this game to be fully open world, 
and it's not really the case. It is divided in uh, small bunches, just like it happens in all traditional GRPGs, and Tales of Arise maintains that type of uh, map. So basically, you are on this part of the map, and to traverse to other part, you need to pass through a, a kind of a loading screen. You have the mini map on the corner, just all the traditional GRPGs have. And you can see even enemies when you are close to them on the map and you can see them follow them. So it's like the traditional edge RPGs, nothing different on that regard. But still, whatever traditional, not evolved or not, the game it is being very well reviewed for uh, what it is. Tales were not really necessarily a bad game, but they weren't really captivated to uh, some audience. All right, and now with this new engine, with this marketing that they have done, and um, the way that they refine the combat to be more mainstream for today's audience, it feels like uh, it's it's working out because it is the best-selling game actually on Steam at the moment, which is really great. Uh, I mean, best GRPG. All right, launched on Steam at the moment. Uh, it was. Uh, it really sold a lot at uh, the early minutes, hours, or days, I don't know. But it was considered the best selling GRPG on Steam. And the reviews have been great with the game. They have been... Metacritic uh, have been having a score of 85 to 90 on the PC version. Steam uh, reviews have been at 93% uh, last time I checked. Uh, user seems to be very satisfied. Some reviews are being giving it uh, 8 out of 5. That is the review of GameSpot, which I don't recommend you to check it out since it have been massively downvoted. I didn't watch the review because uh, after the comments I did understood that uh, users are massively unsatisfied with the review because the reviewer didn't know how to play the game. Uh, please, don't do that. Don't put people that don't actually know how to play games uh, reviewing games. I'm no good with GRPG, so I would never review a GRPG, and I'm doing so basing in quotes of, of reviewers that know what they are doing. And that's it, guys. That's Tales of Arise for you. If you want a better review, please check other channels. I just wanted to give a quick highlight of what you can expect. All right, so there's that. Guys, thank you a lot for watching, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Okay, people, this is it. Ools are back. No sign of any Renin guardsmen. The Renins aren't as populous as the Danans. Probably figure stationing guards in a place like this would be a waste of precious manpower. So this is where the next safe house is? Yes. The last place they'd think to look for enemies is on their own doorstep. That is, assuming anyone actually made it here before us. Zephyr! Looks like we needn't have worried. Come on, 